support. So I'll upload this later. Um, and again, the reason is for the first assignment to get the stuff running. So we don't want you to run into problems. That's why I don't have a problem recording this stuff. Um, first of all, we ask you to install a number of, of components, a number of things, and you basically get them by going, what I just did, go to the help menu um, and say install modeling components. This is the only thing you should be forced to do, nothing else. And then you can select all the stuff you need. So we have Aceleo, which will be used for model text transformation. Um, there might be other things coming, but then you know more or less how to install them, so it shouldn't be a bigger problem. There is operational QVT for model to model transformation, so assignment five. Um, there are graphical modeling framework tooling, which I think this year you actually only need for the first assignment, but it's just to demonstrate something. Xtext, we don't know whether we use it for the assignment, but it will probably be in the lectures anyway. That's, um, Torsten mentioned it, but that's basically a tool where you can generate textual editors for your languages. So you could, you could model Java and create a Java editor with syntax highlighting, syntax completion, syntax check, and so on. Would be crazy, lots of work, but yeah. Uh, and I think also L tools. I don't know if there's anything else in the assignment, but that's all. And you click finish and you go through the wizard and it should work. Um, yeah, that's so much for the installation. Now, who has done the MDSD course in the bachelor? Okay, some people. MD. MDSD, Model Driven Software Development. Yeah. Okay, because then uh, you, you recognize the eCore stuff. You won't have to, you will have to generate code, but you won't have to touch any of the code this time, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, anyway, when we, when we create meet the models, we use eCore. And now I've created lots of stuff in the previous uh, session, so I'll just delete all of that again. Yeah, whatever. But what you can basically do here is you say, I want to have a new eCore model. Give it a name, uh, and you get, you get this tree editor, which doesn't look very special. Um, and you also have the properties view. If you don't have it, then you can right-click somewhere here and say Show Properties View. Um, so whenever you click on an element in here, it will show you some properties. For example, here you can give your meter model some name. Uh, you can give it a, a URI, which you should use some kind of proper URI because you will need it when you do the transformations. Not like I do now. Um, and some prefix. Anyway, and then you can create stuff here, which is quite annoying, but you can do it. So you can say, I want to have a class, uh, names, and so on. You can create references to other classes and so on. Not a lot of fun. Um, when you right-click on here and say, initialize eCore diagram, and there are, this is a small detail, but there are two of them. And it's, out of some reason, they have created another editor. Don't ask me why. Um, but... What you can do then is create a graphical model of your meter model. Um, and you should do that directly in the beginning, otherwise you don't have all the elements that are in the other one. And you can import them somewhere here, exactly. So that's the class I just created here. This is basically a graphical representation of the other model. So this is a bit more uh, fun to edit this. And now if I change this, you see that this model changes as well. So this is just a graphical representation, and you can do your meter model here without bigger problems. Um, and, I mean, that's the lecture content, how to do that and what to do. But, as I said, the second assignment will be create a meter model for... We haven't decided what yet, but we'll give you an assignment. Last year, it was uh, create a system uh, meter model for manufacturing systems. So you have systems that have different steps where you can, for example, you can cut something up to you. Uh, you have transports in between. You have uh, different materials that go in and out. And one of my groups created this, for example. Uh, so you have your manufacturing system. You have different elements. You have steps, quality assurance, transport, manufacturing. And then you have conditions, right? You can put in work pieces. Uh, I don't know, step A takes either a piece of wood or a piece of metal. Um, 
and out comes either this or that and so on. That was the idea here. Um, I won't go into the details here either because that's not really relevant. But the the fun stuff part starts here because we don't here we don't only want to create a model so that you have a model, but we would like to do something with it. Uh, and this is where the, the generation stuff comes into play. What you can do then is from your meter model you can create a generator model. Um, and for that you have to load the meter model. Here this is mine. And I click load. And yeah, I have to select the package. And uh, well this this looks sort of the same. It is more or less a lot of it is the same. But the idea is I can right click on it and generate stuff. So if I just create generate model code, that was the, the MDSD course, then you get basically for each of these classes here you will get a generated class so here I have a step and here I have a transport step and so on so it just generates code you don't have to worry about it you don't have to touch it either uh, so just be aware that this is how you generate stuff what we do then is you can generate editor code uh, and for, DT, for this you need this and this and so on so you just click on generate all and it starts generating and it creates a bunch of projects down here um, awesome these are these projects are Eclipse plugins, so they have these plugin files. And if you know a bit about Eclipse, they, they basically define stuff like here's an editor, here's a wizard, and so on. Um, in order to load these plugins, you actually have to run a new instance of Eclipse, and this is not what I wanted to do. Uh, so if you go to Run Configurations, it actually doesn't matter where you click in your Eclipse. You just say I want to have an Eclipse application and you give it some kind of name to apply run and it will start Eclipse in Eclipse uh, and this is really the idea is for Eclipse development so it takes all the projects you have here and if they are plugins it loads it in the new instance <coughs> this is not a very funny part if you have an old computer because it's, it requires some memory um, yeah this, this doesn't look any special but You'll see now if I create a new project here, I just take any project. Then if nothing went wrong, I can say file new other. And here in my example EMF stuff, I have my manufacturing system. So now I can say create a, a manufacturing model of my meter model. Um, and I need to have a root element. So here my root element is this manufacturing system. And this is my generated editor. So this is the tree editor. Um, and I can right click here and say new child. And I can only create these elements that I allowed in the meter model. So if we go back here, uh, of course I've closed it as always. If we go to the diagram, this is my manufacturing system. And it contains response. Nah, what does it contain? Yeah, it contains responsibles. It contains workpiece types, it contains workpieces and it consists of, it has a lot of number of elements and these are all possible, these are yeah, all sorts of steps and so on. Uh, and this is exactly what I can do here. So I can only create that stuff that I defined in my meter model. For example, I want to have a storage point and so on. So I can create models. Um, this will more or less be the first design or the second one, the first real one. Create a meter model and create an example model of it that has some kind of properties that we will tell you. Um, the second assignment now is... Um, yeah, I can close this again. I don't think I'll need it. There's another way, and I, I don't think I've found it out since the last session. I'll check again how that worked, but it is possible to create uh, a model also here without starting a new Eclipse. So if you just want to test what you've done there, you can also create a model. I forgot how, but I'll check. Anyway, here is one. So that's what the students created last year. This is uh, an example of this manufacturing system. Um, the next thing is OCL, next assignment. Um, 
the reason why we want OCL is that usually this is not enough. So, for example, here it says a step uh, is a manufacturing system element and there are transitions between them. So you can go from one step to the next, right? But you might want to say something like uh, in between a manufacturing step and another manufacturing step, there has always has to be a transport step. And that's nothing that you can do here. Uh, that's the reason for OCL. These are constraints. And if I open my meta model in this OCL in eCore, this is the textual representation of the model. Um, but here you see there are, there are these, uh, you will see when, once you've learned what it is, but there are constraints in here. This is a, basically a small expression language, a small programming language. For example, there is one here, there's one constraint that says every, every step has to have a responsible, like a person that is responsible for that step. Uh, and the constraint says basically, well, the, the attribute responsible has to have size one. So there has to be something there. Um, this is a very simple example, but then I can go on my model here and say validate. And it tells me there are lots of problems. But one of them is, for example, that there are these responsibles missing. And I think I found earlier if I go to my properties, yeah, for example, this step doesn't have a responsible. So that, that's an example why the constraint didn't work. Um, that will be the, the third assignment. It's usually also quite easy, but it's very important to understand what's, what's going on there. Um, and then we get to, I would say, for many people, this is the core of, of model-driven engineering, all the transformation stuff. Because this is, so far, we've been able to create models, and you can, yeah, what can you really do with them? I've shown them to you. Um, so the idea is you do something with them. And the, the most classical use case is code generation. You take a class diagram or you take a, a state machine and you generate code from it. Which I'm not sure, but we, prob we might do that. Maybe not. Um, often the idea is everyone has heard of code generation, but we would like to show you something else. What else you could do. What we did last year is... Uh, well, you have this, this is how you look at the model. It doesn't look very pretty. It's, you don't really understand what's going on. So what we said is, for the model to text assignment, your assignment is to transform, to write a transformation for any kind of manufacturing system. So following this meta model that transforms a model into a dot representation. Do you know what dot is? Anyone? No. Dot is this thing here, a graph which you've probably heard. So it's a tool for, for visualization, it's text-based. So I can say, I can define, this is a very easy example. It's, yeah, it looks a bit like a programming language, but you can define graphs and you say generate and it generates you something like this. Uh, and there are some crazy examples like this one. So th there are some extremely crazy examples, but they're not here in the samples, I think. Uh, but basically this is what it can do. So we said, we want you to generate this. Did it crash now? No. We want you to generate this text so that you can actually visualize your system. Um, and you'll get something else, but you'll also generate some kind of text. Uh, but if we look at how this looks in this case, so that's last year they used Aceleo. We haven't decided for this year. Where is my transformation? Here. Um, that's, these transformation languages are basically programming languages, easy programming languages. And they often they, con they contain OCL, so it's good that you learned that in the third assignment. But they're rather easy, they just say, they're templates, they say take an element of type X and do something with it. Generate text. Uh, I won't go into the details, but I'll just show you the output here if I actually run this. So I kind of have to say that take this model and this meter model and blah blah and run and it doesn't work. Classical demonstration. Uh, probably it was the wrong transformation. Anyway, now it, it ran and it generated these files here for me. I don't know why it's two, maybe the, the, the group did something wrong. Uh, but I, I basically what I did is I ran the transformation on this example model. So they have some kind of furniture system. Um, so it's probably this one here. And this file just contains a lot of text. 
And if I now copy this into this tool here, it should show me a picture of what they have done. Oh my god, this is small. Why do you always go back? Ouch, minus. Yeah, so now they, they have basically generated a, a representation of this system. So here you have storage, here you have some transport, input-output materials, and so on. Um, that's a very classical example of a transformation. And of course, code generation is another example, but it's quite different. Again, here we go back to the purpose of the model, right? Is the purpose maybe to, to show something to people or to get something that runs? Or to have something that works in a simulator? It really depends. Quite often you also have multiple purposes, right? You would like to have a model that is good for showing to someone, but it also uh, should be simulatable or so. Okay, that was model to text. Model to model, you will discuss it in the lecture, but this is of course a bit of a philosophical discussion. Is, is text also a model or not? Whatever, it's just different languages. Uh, you can of course use a model to text transformation to generate a model somehow. But the idea is that in model to text, you say somewhere all these things that are black here are just text that I have written there. It's just in this case that it actually works with, with graph with or with dot. It might also be complete rubbish if I just do this. Model to model languages. Um, yeah, have I crashed my Eclipse now by doing that? <laughs> awesome. So much for Eclipse got stable recently. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> in model to model transformation languages, uh, the difference is that you you define <clears throat> what is my input meter model and what is my output meter model. So you really have two meter models fixed. Uh, the example we have here actually used the same model. So it's a so-called in-place transformation, but you again, you'll get back to that. Um, what we did here, you see this blue box here maybe? That was a composite step, so it's a step that contains other steps. And the task was that we said we don't want to have these, so write transformation that flattens any kind of manufacturing system. So it removes all the transformation steps by kind of resorting these transitions and so on. Um, and it's again, it's another language. They're all not too difficult. If, you've, if you have learned Java before, you will get those as well pretty easy. But one word of warning for, for meet the modeling, maybe not as much, but for all the others, you really have to do that practically yourself. Uh, Especially because they're so easy to understand. You, if you just sit in the room, you will probably get everything. But when you have to do it yourself, it's like learning Java from a book and not trying it. Uh, so please spend the time to write something yourself. Maybe you don't do the whole group transformation that you do in your group, but practice them. Uh, especially these last two. In, in the last, since I have been in the course, these in the exam have always been disastrous, even though the tasks were not that difficult. So please make sure you, you know a bit what's going on there. Uh, yes, yeah, I can run this as well just to show what's happening. Maybe I can't. Yeah, same thing. I say I want to have this as an input model. This is my meter model or output. Now this is the output here. Run. And it gives me some kind of model here. Uh, and this has the wrong ending, but if I change this, then it's actually readable. So it's again a system that is uh, a model that conforms to my manufacturing system meter model. And if you look closely, you'll see there are no more of these composite steps now. So apparently the, the students have done that correctly. Good. Um, that is a very short roundup of all the assignments that you will have and all the how it all hangs together. As I said, maybe in the end you don't need to use it in that order, you don't need to use it at all. For example, transformations are very common. I mean, you can also write a transformation in Java, of course. Um, but if you think of file formats, common things like converting XML to something else, that's basically a model-to-model -model transformation, if you think about it. Um, then there's the big assignment. 
and it will have all these things again. We just don't tell you how and when and what. Just tell you at the end we want to have this do it. Um, so last year we used uh, um, we used a car simulator. So Christian here, one of my colleagues, is working with autonomous cars, and he has this simulator which I think he only uses for teaching, but maybe also for research. It's a simulator with cars, and you can park in and out and so on. And the big assignment was create a language that allows you to model parking scenarios and then automatically transform them into code and run them on the simulator so that your car parks. Um, and that was more or less the whole assignment, so we didn't go into details what and when you will have to do. Good. Um, is there, are there any questions? Excellent. Then, make sure you get the first assignment done. And first supervision is on coming Tuesday, which will probably be um, a lot of just initial discussion and meeting the group, finding the room and so on, because it's shortly because before the first assignment deadline. But of course, even though it's an individual assignment, if you have any things you want to discuss or finish up there, you can do that in the supervision as well. All right. Thanks. Thank you.